Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm Robbie Winters. Okay. <laughs> right, I got my water. All right. Yeah, we're good. So, oh, so many things. So, uh, so all right. So um, we've we've discussed some of the the latest updates on candidates. You know, yes. thirty plus nine candidates, and right. uh, you crazy. know, we'll see yes, what we crazy. get by the end of the month. Oh, right? I hope some drop out. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine some will, but we'll see. But yeah. you know, any notions that we were somehow going to come up shy, and we wouldn't. Yeah. We wouldn't have right. necessarily needed that modification of the ballot design to limit the number oh, of choices goodness. to 15. Yeah. Well, it's starting to look like a pretty damn good thing right now. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, we'll see how it shakes out. But meanwhile, there are other things happening around town, mm -hmm. and um, some of who, who, some of which will play into the election season without a doubt. Okay. Right? And um, one of them, which is current, it's actually there's a planning board hearing tonight. Is it about at, this particular? Yes. Is it about the leg of the call? Yeah. Oh, I'll okay. It so, then. so just a little, give a little really fast background here. Okay? okay. So, the old Edward J. Sullivan Courthouse, um, you down know, in East Cambridge. Down East Cambridge, basically was vacant. Eventually, it was only the jail there for a number of years, but then eventually the jail was evacuated. The court was moved to Wolverine. Yeah. Which is so really, the yeah. the court operations disappeared a long time long, ago, that's true. and the jail has now been gone for what about seven years or something like that. So it's basically been empty for empty. how long? They turned Five, off the power, years. turned off the water, turned so, out yeah. everything. So the, right? It's falling apart. Yeah. It's also got asbestos. It's asbestos, over. which yeah. is one of the reasons why it was closed down in the first place. Okay, so ah. back where I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was actually in 2013. Hmm. It's amazing how the years Six come years flying by here. I hope I didn't mess up the date. But yeah. basically That's what right. happened was is that I think it was when Dennis Carlone first was on the council. Because that was the year that yeah. NASM. Mazen, Mazen, yeah, and, mm -hmm. and McGovern too. So I right. think what happened was is that um, the DCAM, which is the Division of Capital Assets Management for the Massachusetts, because uh, it was a county building, that's why it was allowed to be built because it was a government building. A it says it's um, owned by the state. Right. So the, oh. when when Middlesex County was disbanded, oh, oh I see, it, um, it, everything it, revert to the state ownership. It. So okay. it's been sitting there as basically an asset. But a kind of a filthy asset mm -hmm. because yeah. it's uh, an asbestos-laden building with other mm -hmm. problems, and it's kind of a more of a burden than anything else. So, it was made available to the city. Uh, it was offered to the city uh, at various points, but the city said, "There's no way we're going to take on this yeah. uh, financial yeah. uh, um, liability." Right. It right. really was seen primarily as right. a liability. Now, on the other hand, you know, if you're a developer who wants to actually turn it into a useful purpose, you might find a way to actually make it profitable even after you pay for the enormous cost of asbestos remediation and reconstruction of the building. Mm -hmm. So, uh, DCAM put up the property and people bid on it and the winning bidder was Leggett McCall. Who has built other things? Yes. Here? Oh, yeah, sure. And the, um, I mean, I couldn't name the specifics, but yeah, but yeah. they've been actively involved for years. Mm -hmm. So um, so then that kicked off the process once they were selected. And the city, um, the planning board back then, you know, and I hope I'm getting the years right here because it seems like it's a we'll long a time break. ago. All right. Right. But the thing is, is um, they, they were hearings, planning board hearings, where they had to grant special permits. Um, you know, uh, basically the, there was a deal cut to lower the building a few stories to... Um, they, did, they made some uh, right. accommodations. So, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like the planning board was thrilled because of the fact that they were taking this rather, rather mm -hmm. tall, yeah. anomalous building in East Cambridge. And because, um, you know, if, we, if they basically had a vacant lot and they said, we'd like to build a building of this scale there, they'd yeah. say, no way. But, but it's already... But the building so is they're already not, there. So they're not going to demolish no. the building. Uh, no, no, but they are, they're going to demolish it in the sense of leaving almost all of the superstructure there and then rebuilding onto the same structure. So they're allowed the height that it is now. Yep, that's grandfathered in. Yeah, and they so. did agree to take off basically where the jail is on top. Oh. So, um, put so the and it'll be a much nicer looking building when yeah. all is said and done, yeah, but it'll also be, jail. but it'll be restored to an active use, right? Yeah. 
So anyway, the, spe the special permits, yes, it was swirling controversy. I remember going to the meetings down mm. at the Kennedy Longfellow School for the, with the planning board, but they granted the special permits. And then some of the neighbors who, some neighbors loved what was, well, they were happy with the outcome and all their- Because they wanted the, something done. There was a lot of mitigation. It was a lot of benefits that were yeah. made available um, should this be allowed to proceed. Yeah. And then there were some people who just were horrified and wanted it to basically, as I often say, they wanted it zoned down to farmland right yeah they wanted it to basically to be turned Go into away. like a little a little community a garden or yeah. something like that which was thoroughly unrealistic you mean not housing back then nobody i never heard anybody talk about housing because that wasn't then. a big issue or it, it wasn't seem like it was not, honestly the, it, yeah. the 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 affordable housing proposal that's currently being floated by uh, Representative Connolly is really a red herring. That was just done purely for strategic purposes. Well, also, you know, purposes. a lot of people that are supporting it don't like the affordable housing overlay, so they say, hey, look, we've got this whole yeah, thing. Why the, are we doing that? And it's, but, it, it know, shouldn't be equated The, like the mayor yeah. has now issued a response about this here where he's, good, try, but he's trying to yeah. equate those who oppose this with those who oppose affordable housing. And the truth is, is they're it's not so cleanly related. No, there, but in there some many, cases it There is. are many people yeah, yeah. who are for this, who are very much in favor of affordable housing overlay and or not, you know? Mm. And so I, I think it's a mistake to try and link the two. Does he say it's that? It's very thing? different. Well, no, I can point I, out. Well, I'm just going by who posted it and what their right. feelings are. So that's yeah. all I'm just saying. Yeah. No, yeah. for right. example, the a Better Cambridge people, they're gung ho for the courthouse project and they're gung ho they're for the affordable housing. Yeah. Right. More and housing. Some of the more people housing, with this housing. emergent liberal You're right. Cambridge so it's a mixed group. bag. Yeah. Okay. So you can't draw conclusions. But I think his reasons about the state and all are pretty good. He lays it out here pretty right. well. This so is, this is on but anyway, let's Lister. just to give a little bit of the the yeah. uh, the background on this was okay. that was that uh, all right so so there were court challenges so mm -hmm. the special permits were granted and then they said you're not that's no good you know anyway went through multiple levels of court all the way up I believe to Supreme Judicial Court eventually hmm. basically the people who were litigating lost on all points so that brought us up more or less to like maybe was it last year or even into this year where okay now that all the legal challenges are cleared now Leggett McCall can proceed right and um and then do you think it was going to stop there not in Cambridge that's not the way it works yeah. so all right so ultimately uh, at least according to the first approximation of how this would have to happen they wanted to have 420 parking spaces made on a long-term lease from the First Street Garage. Which has 1,000-something spaces, right? Uh, yeah, something in that order, yeah. right? Okay. Now, keep in mind, that garage was built essentially simultaneously with the old yeah, courthouse the building. Courthouse. Right. So, you know, that was its purpose. Now, are those some of those parking spaces being used for other purposes that have emerged since then? Of course. But still, at least right? over 600 spaces. Right. And the thing is, is the city has actually been leasing some of the spaces provisionally with the understanding that should this... Hmm. The courthouse development happened that then that relationship would end and then they would be available hmm. for courthouse to redevelopment. Hmm. Okay. So um so anyway, the the people who are opponents, I'll say it flat out. They basically said, okay, what's our last way of stopping this? It was let's use the parking issue. If we can block, if we can get uh the city council to not approve hmm. of the and it requires a two thirds vote, I believe, to allow this hmm. uh leasehold arrangement then maybe we can just stop the project cold. Personally, I don't know that that's true, mm. but the thing is it certainly seems to be the last when would they have, stage. When would they do that? When would the city council have to do that? Is it an ordinance it's, thing? I'll tell you exactly. Oh, all because right, right me. now, tonight, yeah. the planning oh, the board planning is having board. a hearing on so this. So they usually go by their And the planning will make right? a rec recommendations right. about this. And then at the midsummer meeting, which mm -hmm. is July, July 29th, 29th yeah. the meeting starts at 5.30. There's a oh, 6.30 hearing, special, hearing, special right. hearing on the disposition of the parking spaces I on the see. First Street Garage. Oh, boy, it's going to be packed. So we're talking yeah. now, we're in a two-week window here. Right. Now, meanwhile, Representative Connolly comes through with this sort of wild-eyed thing. I have oh, to yeah. say it, saying like, no, 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 do, you know, it's turned it into this sort of revolutionary yeah. statement about, mm. you know, you can't put public property shouldn't be put into private hands. Oh. Of course, the, somebody put in one of the newspapers yeah. here recently, they pointed out that that property was in private hands for, yeah hundreds of years and it was a relatively recent thing when they actually turned it into the county courthouse that it was put oh. into public hands so now it's basically being reverted and there's lots of precedent mm. of public assets being mm -hmm. putting back into private hands mm -hmm. so 
anyway, so the, the red herring of it, Council, uh, Representative Connolly makes out and says, we, this, we want the entire thing to be 100% affordable housing, basically trying to capitalize on another strong sentiment yeah. that some people have, right? right. That, yeah. And um, now the truth is, is that, now I, I like to put it to the people's question. Mm -hmm. If this was a, just an empty lot and you said, would you like to build a very, very large scale, highly dense, 100% pure affordable housing project a la Ringe Towers no. in the middle of East Cambridge, the people of East Cambridge would really be the ones no, no. rising up in opposition. But why not mixed income? No one builds mixed you know, income in, anymore. Well, in my opinion, yeah. every affordable yeah. housing should initiative mixed, should be a mixed project. Which actually, given what the average median <clears throat> income is in Cambridge, it probably, it could it be 40%, 80%. Yeah. You're talking about people making $70,000 yeah. I mean, a the, single person. The missing link yeah. in terms of affordability yeah. is really yeah. more in the, you know, in the center of the spectrum, not at the, at the end just. Right. So, yeah. um, so, but anyway, it's really just a political tactic. And, you know, so then Connolly had a group of people there for a big photo op over the weekend. Just, and in there, there's Ben Simon and Charles Franklin, a few other city oh, council that, that candidates. Oh, that happened already? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not this. So they're oh, basically right. trying to, like, capitalize on this yeah. to, you know, <clears throat> rally the troops. Did they, get, did they actually canvas and go... I thought I read that today yeah, that they were going yeah. to do it. Yeah, but the thing is, okay. so people, they're obviously trying to make this into mm -hmm. a real sort of a, a, an the organizing thing, the, you know, uh, and they basically the try, I'm sure they're going to try and portray any city councilor who votes in favor oh, of the leasehold yeah, arrangement. The somehow the you're, 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 yep. you're giving handouts to the yep. evil corporations and you're right. not for I, the I people. I want some grown-ups in the room here. I would you know, love yeah, I'd like to for grown-ups yeah. to be elected so to the Cambridge realists, City you know, Council. Yeah, realists, grown right? I mean, I, have, I may have some issues with some of the, the incumbent yeah. city councilors, but the truth yeah. is is that I do hope they act they, like adults and just yeah. do something that's sensible here and so not just political. There's so much you can control and so much that you can't. And, right, um, but there is a strong political temptation, ooh. you know, to take a hot-button issue and try and score cheap points on it, you know? And I, and I know that that's about, you know, so the question is, can you get to six? All right, right? I'm going to throw out a really interesting point. Okay, let's just say in their magical world, it would go to affordable housing. So that means we're going to have a thousand parking spaces. Well, so you know, because no, isn't nobody there a addresses parking? that. I know. There's well, a parking I mean, freeze. Oh, all of a sudden only, you can move here and have a car. Right. Only, we're not only, building those anymore. Yet oh. more evidence of the yeah. fact that this is yes. a classic red herring. This oh, is never God. really a serious plan. Could, could the parking... Know? Is the parking garage buildable as something else? Um, you know, actually, the parking part of the mitigation that comes yeah. with letting Letty, Letty McCall proceed is, to is take down actually, some of that? not so much take it down, but the thing is to use the parking garage, the first street frontage, which has been a failure as a commercial vent it, uh, venture for yeah. years, they'll yeah. actually make it real. They actually uh -huh. will probably put in things like a food store or whatever, and they'll mm -hmm. actually make that whole area better. Okay, as a result of this, so it's not just a matter of they have the money. They got the money, <laughs> and they got the they have the and, the, yet, and they would the get incentive. affordable units if there's going to be housing. I think there'll be yeah. office and housing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and return it to an active use. A lot just, of people in the business oh, community oh, down there would be are thrilled at the possibility. Yeah, because they've been looking at this empty. They're just store. looking at this yeah. horrible, horrible. I, I ghost would hope forever. that people that live around there, um, that you know, I mean, I, I would think it's split. I cannot believe it is that split. the community is that. No question. Yeah. I went to the hearing down there, yeah. the most recent one, mm -hmm. um, that where the city made a representation about the findings right. about this right. parking study. Which they all said and, was uh, Oh, and people bogus. say, oh, it was 50-50, yeah, and somebody says, no, yeah. it was 60% in favor, or no, opposed. No. And, uh, it was all nonsense. I have read some beautiful letters to the editor in the Chronicle from people who live there in supporting this, that live, That's right. live there. And there are just, some yeah. great arguments in favor. Yeah. I can yeah. understand, I completely yeah. can sympathize with people's objections, especially yeah. people who live there a long time or whose families have been there for a long yeah. time, yeah. who yeah. never liked it when the courthouse arrived 50 years ago. So they're not going to... They're still kind of mad I'm not about sure it. they would like 100% affordable housing. I can guarantee you they wouldn't. No. Okay, so, but um, but so that's why it's all pol political all right, rhetoric let's go on at to this point else, here. Well, no, let's just sort of say oh, that right, the timeline sure. about it. So, oh, yeah. so uh, it would require six votes. Now, what would happen? I mean, it's an inter It's worth speculating because it's a possibility. What happens if, in fact, it doesn't get six votes? Mm. Does that block the project? I seriously doubt it because Is it totally up to the city council. 
You know, I think it it's becomes another court case. Um, well, to some degree it, it is. is. Um, but the thing I is... It's just about the, the parking spaces. Um, right. But the thing is, it's... it's um, right. And I'm not 100% sure if that's yeah. because of if you have a building of a certain scale, whether the parking mm -hmm. is mandatory within right. zoning requirements or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there is an alternative, and I actually posted this up on the Cambridge Board listserv today, which oh, is... Oh, good. I'll have to look at uh, it. And it was apparently something some people floated back in several years ago when this idea, when this project was first being proposed, mm -hmm. which is, it's going to sound wacky to some people, but yeah. waive the parking requirement entirely. Yeah. Now, what does that mean? Park. Now, again, is that legal? I don't know, right? But if you did, yeah. what would happen? Well, some people who might want to go to work there, I mean, there may be some issues in terms of the financing of the project because yeah. the banks may say, well, yeah, we're I, not I going to do that. I think but, they need it. But anyway. Well, actually, you know, people will need parking, but but guess what? So if you work there and you need parking, you know what you do? Park at the Galleria? No, you park at the First Street Garage. It's just that it's not a leasehold arrangement where Leggett McCall has exclusive so, control of those and spaces. And then maybe they would help their employees forever. uh with right. a reduction in and, rates. And do a reduction, yeah. basically encourage alternative means of transportation. So you're and saying they have alternatives harder. if they don't get these spaces? I think they have alternatives. I think the city has alternatives as yeah. well. You know, um, I mean, I hope it doesn't come to the, I mean, personally, actually, I think this is not a bad plan anyway. Right. Um, you know, so maybe what they should do is they should modify the agreement with Leggett McCall, get six votes, if they can get six votes, to say, to allow the city manager to go into negotiations to permit up to 420 parking spaces. Mm. And if a few years down the road, mm. there's, there's a good argument to be made that maybe because, they don't need that yeah. many because there's enough embracing yeah. of alternate transportation right. or even encouragement from the city for yeah. alternate transportation. Yeah. Um, or maybe people who who work there live close enough that it, that it's. But it seems to me that, that that parcel was desirable because it was right there with the garage too. It's one um, of the few places left. You know. It's it's certainly true. I mean, the thing is, is that if if um, without that, it became a less yeah. attractive option for right. Leggett McCall to pursue. Exactly. Right. The thing is, it was also an often a sort of a plan B to use some rent some spaces at the Galleria. Uh, yeah, because that's not that far from there, right? I mean, right, not... but, but what complicates that yeah. now is that Galleria, um, uh, or Cambridge Side Galleria, mm -hmm. has, um, they have some plans themselves for doing some and reconfiguration where's that at? in that right. space. Right, because, I mean, that's going to well, be they, like the arsenal where they're I think um, I think walks. they have a zoning yeah. petition, and mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where it stands. My, my understanding is that they were going to let that expire, yeah. resubmit it with some modifications to the plans, maybe adjust I mean, the heights. I, you don't go there probably. You're not a shopper at all. But I don't really I've go to been malls. there lately, but it seems like it's more compared to a lot of it more. I don't see a lot of vacant stores there, but I could be wrong. It seems like more you know, of an active mall, but I do think that more than um, like a suburban mall is like old Shoppers World out. In yeah, no, it's not. Them. I think because it is more yeah. urban, it does get more right. uh, people coming I think to it. When yeah. you you know when I was a kid, you know we used to go out to Great Eastern Mills on Long Island. Oh, yeah. You know, you, we, in a car. In a car, you right. know, and that was all the rage was going out to the mall, right? And now it's IKEA. You know, Roosevelt like Chia, Field yeah. uh, Shopping Mall, right? right? Right. On Long Island, right, and um, kids, yeah. and and you know the the mall, the suburban mall concept has definitely had its day. Yep. Um, but I think it has had its day, and and everywhere, she shopping malls like that have been I know. failing, I know. or they're re envisioning them. Even if you look at Assembly right. Square over in Somerville, um, oh, they, well, that's a whole different. But now that's they've incorporated amazing. housing, oh, theaters, housing, theaters, whatever. They have uh, to re envision it. It's, that's yeah. incredible. Over so there's there. no. And you have Encore. Oh, yeah. There. So no question that, yeah, that re envisioning yeah. Cambridge Side Galleria mm -hmm. is, is a good idea. You know? Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, the one thing, the great deficiency I see in a lot of the ways City does yeah. planning, I see, I saw it in Envision Cambridge. Nobody yeah. talked about Gallery, nobody talked about Courthouse, nobody talked about huh. Leachmere, North Point, or any of these things as part of the Envision process. That's interesting. But the truth is, if you want to really talk about serious yeah. long term planning, yeah. Damn city ought to have been all over this, baby. You know, they yeah. they, they would have should have been talking about the courthouse redevelopment and the galleria and when well, they I moved guess the they green were, line. They were letting envision people follow the thing. No, I bad choice. You know, yeah. but honestly, it's overdue for the mm. city to sort of to uh, uh, take a big look at the area. Yeah, I, I hope Leggett McCall proceeds, but the thing mm. is, is that, and I hope they re envision the galleria mall. But that doesn't negate the mm -hmm. need 
for the city to rethink that because ultimately when they move the green line over to the other side of the highway mm. and they have Lechmere State, old Lechmere Station is going to get turned into something interesting. You've got great opportunities here if you're into city planning. Right, but, but how much is dependent on the city when it's all going to be private development? Zoning is the okay, city but planning right now, for private so, development. But isn't it, uh, isn't that light industrial over there? Or the um, commercial? Well, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of housing development. I yeah. think the North Point area is sort of already been long permitted, so yeah. that's all sort of yeah. picking up and happening. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, is that you know when when they move the sort of archaic, quaint but archaic, um, uh, Green Line trolley turnaround there mm -hmm. at Leechmere, mm -hmm. uh, and they move that over across the highway, uh, it's not going to be sitting there as a vacant lot. It's going to turn no. into something pretty It'll vital. I yeah. think First Street, they're going to bomb it straight on through, make mm. that connection, which would be a great thing. Hmm. You know, so you can probably go straight through all the way to North road? Point. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, so they, they've got to reconnect things, mm. reconfigure things. The viaducts over the McGrath O'Brien Highway will be mm. gone. Uh, and it, you know, it, but that's not just us. That's also you got other entities involved. It's all you've within got state. You've got right. It's I true. I know, but right. it's it's but, like the whole BU Bridge thing and the yeah. Mass Pike. It's like four different entities. But it's so. city planning. I mean, this yeah. is what city planning yeah, should I, be about. I would suspect someone's looking at that. That meant that I hope so. Out in front, but calling Dr. Carlone. Calling Dr. Carlone. Carlone. What if, Honestly, I mean, this well, this and is his. And bar, listen, I mean, all Dennis Carlone was very actively involved in the development of the gallery. He knows that area mm. professionally better than anybody on the right. planet she's one good and reason to keep to whatever degree council. he yeah. rem if, if he remains on the city council <laughs> yeah. he's a good person to really be mm. making this a, a central a centerpiece of mm. city plan urban planning you mm. know i think it's great opportunities there you know yeah um so i really hope it happens mm. you know you know we'll see Right. All right. Well. <laughs> All right. Um, so anyway, that so so be in mind, be mindful of that. You know, the planning board hearing tonight, as well oh, as right, because they will the city they will be paying attention the to the recommendations of, uh, from that. Yeah, yeah, and and think clearly when thinking about the city councilors when they have to take that difficult vote come mm -hmm. July 29th. Yeah. You know, don't just listen to some diatribe from Mike Connolly mm -hmm. that says that anybody who does this is an evil capitalist or in bed with the corporate, uh, you know, neoliberals or whatever but, other But just qualify rubbish. saying the planning board is not a final, they make recommendations. They just make They're, recommendations. Is, yeah. it, is well, it the Board of Zoning the, Appeal that, that you know, is I'm, more official? I'm not 100% yeah. sure, sure on this one here, but okay. the thing is, is that <clears throat> to whatever degree it was the planning board that had to issue the special permit, they may have a, an official role here in basically oh. sealing they the issue deal. They special permit? Yeah. That's, oh. They were granted the special permit. So they uh, do have some. City Council does right. not do special permits. It's all, right. all part of the zoning. I, I'm confused it's, and by the, entities. And right. The Board of Zoning Appeal grants variances. Okay. Now, they, um, now, it is possible okay. that if you wanted to do a waiver of parking requirements for mm -hmm. the courthouse development, You'd have to go to then them. maybe then that becomes a question of a zoning variance. And mm -hmm. then that's a little tricky, potentially. Hmm. You know? Um, you know, I but but I still think it's worthwhile idea, worth at least thinking, putting it on back on the Variances table. Variances and special permits. I have to do my homework because I just right. It's beyond me. <laughs> absolutely, All absolutely. Right. So, so quickly, I'm, we only have a, a four minutes left. Um, I'm gonna say you uh, want to talk about. Your I want to talk about infrastructure. Yeah, right? you know, yeah, okay. sort of like let's speaking of infrastructure. I'm going to tell you the the travails of Robert. So right. I have a three family house. And, we know that. Yes, and, and you my, don't want a fifty foot thing. My next to you my the three family <laughs> house has a roof drain that comes right down the center mm -hmm. and then exits out the building, which got blocked. And yes, so I had a rainstorm multiple times through Water, my house. Heavy rainstorms. Yeah. Rain pour water pouring yeah. through smoke detectors, lighting fixtures. You thought works. it was coming from the top. I was, and it wasn't on the roof. It was a blockage, it was right? Up. You know, so, um, so for multiple times, whenever we had a few big rainstorms, mm -hmm. we had to like include like two thirty in the morning, four mm -hmm. in the morning, running into the basement. I had, to, oh. I had to open up a uh, a plug in the basement to let the water just. Go into the that front part of my basement and then taking okay. buckets out to so the curb. It was what tough. Is, what is you got the drain guys and what is clogging that? Okay, so it turns out that there is a pipe was cracked. I think it was done by Eversource, but I'm not 100 percent sure. A, a, a water uh, uh, the storm drain storm going drain. out to okay. the city drains. Right. I okay. I know more about my own per close nearby infrastructure yeah. than I ever planned to have. Yeah. 
Um, and tree roots from a city tree, I'm pretty sure, actually have been getting into there mm -hmm. and pretty much filled up the whole drain. So water couldn't even get out anymore. Wow. And, and what's actually been happening in a kind of curious coincidence is that the water that was trying to get out there was basically just filling up the groundwater out near the tree. So that I've been nourishing this tree. So the tree's actually growing. The tree's doing great. Well, see, there you go. Um, but so I'm, I'm watering the tree. Actually, I just sent a message to Public Works today saying, I think we have an interesting plan here yeah. for watering street trees. Right. And just, it, just let's allow runoff place. from yeah. flat roof buildings to yeah. go infiltrate under the ground and just have the overflow go to the storm drains, which Without is how it's working Without clogging your, yeah, but how do you, right. yeah, that's so, all right, now that's all great, but I, don't, I do and not want rain pouring down right. my house again. No. So we can reconfigured it so that now when the water goes down out the house, yeah. Yeah. it now has a relief mechanism that I proposed yeah. that says that if it starts to back up, it just shoots out the side of the building. And into what? Onto the side of the building, outside. Okay, and, and, not, it can, and, and not back into the basement? No, 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 okay. no, no. So the thing is, I now have a safety valve basically put into place. So it, you think Eversource broke the pipe? I don't know that it was Eversource, but the, where the pipe break occurred is exactly where they twice went in with a backhoe mm. and opened up a big trench when they were trying to restore the electrical service okay, there. And they still have a wire five on the years tree, ago. right? In the backyard. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that, you know, shame on them. You know, I know, that, that but, needs to get out. But the yeah. engineering guy for Cambridge, apparently, yeah. who, who has been completely unresponsive, I will not yeah. name him by name now, but he apparently is no longer there. And oh, I, they, no they, they, as of Saturday, they put me in touch with somebody else. So oh, gosh. now I'm hoping to hear back from Eversource. Right. But when I do, I, honestly, listen, if I have to pay for all this, I'll pay for it. But the sure. thing is, is that. Yeah. You know, I kind of want next, if Eversource ever opens up the sidewalk again, I want to address the yeah. pipe too. Yeah. You know, they got bigger and fish to fry. So, Aren't they trying to get so a whole substation, I'm, all that stuff? Yeah. So maybe we have so some leverage. Restoration here. of my yeah. electrical service yeah. uh, underground, yeah. fixing of the sewer pipe, okay. and, and the, a, a great plan for how to water street trees yeah. based on flat roof oh, buildings. Oh, gosh. Which, I got an idea here. So, all right. So, anyway, it's been an adventure, but. Oh As boy. of this afternoon, I have a relief valve. So. That, that, that's good. We all need relief valves. Bless us all. So we so. may not be here next week. We're going to do the summer schedule. We may be off and on. So but we'll yeah. definitely be back after so. the uh, council meeting. See you soon. Bye.